Hi, I am Mia Lamont, your host for the Brand Disruptors podcast. I've been a disruptor all my life, and I'm here to help other women step into their own greatness so that they can get paid to be themselves. I decided to start this podcast because I wanted to show other women how I and women like me took their life's disruptions and changed their lives and the the lives of others, not to mention broke the mold in their industries. Look, branding is all about who you are at your core, the person that your soul is calling you to be. So get ready to step into your power, own your authenticity, and show up like the boss that you are. If you enjoy all aspects of personal development, you are in the right place. Let's get started. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, Marshida. How are you today? I'm awesome. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here with you. I'm excited that you're here. (laughs) And the fact that it's super late where you are and you said, yes, I'm going to do this anyway, right? Yeah, I, I wouldn't miss it. It's, yeah. it's like 10, 10, 30 at night right now. 20, uh-huh. Yeah. So it's fine. Yeah. I would be so dead right person. now. <laughs> <laughs> so look, tell, tell the audience a little bit about who you are, what you do and how we met. How we met. Let's start with that first. Okay. We met in a program called Divine Living Academy. And after that, we went into Queen program with Gina Devi. And that was how I, I kind of like, uh, I saw you. Um, I was, I remember then when I first met you, Mia, um, I was one of those people who was like, I'd rather keep quiet. I'd not, I'd just listen in and, and not bring too much attention to myself because I was like, so, oh, all of these amazing people, you know, I feel I, at that time when I first, I think it was back in 2017 or 2018 when I first joined um, the program and I saw you, you were visible, you were talking and I was like, I was really admiring you and and you kind of were like, was very visible to me at that time. Um, it took me some time before I, I break that, that fear and went online and asked a question live uh, to Gina. And uh, that was all because of the internal work that I did. And I, I remembered you. you. I don't know if you remembered me at that time, but I remember you. But I was very, very silent when I first joined, I remember. So we met on Divine Living. We met again at Queen because it was a higher end program, coaching program. And um, yeah, I made it. I made the money and got, got to the higher end program. Yeah. And and I'm so glad that you were so vulnerable and talked about that because I too experienced that when I first got into the program, like I had never done anything online before. And so there were so many other women who it was easier for them to get visible online. It was easier for them to do the work. And I too felt that same way. I felt like there were other people who were more visible than I was. Right. And so I'm glad that you talked about that because I think that a lot of us We just automatically assume that other people are comfortable doing things that they're really not comfortable doing. Exactly, exactly. And that's the same thing I hear about people. uh, Right now, people are telling me, oh, Murshida, you're so confident on on camera. You know, I could never be like you. And I'm like, "Uh," like a couple of years ago, I was like so scared of the camera. Not, not, Not television camera. I've had experience in that. But the laptop camera, I was afraid of. Isn't that weird? It's like all these things that we put in our head and we believe them, you know? It is. And it's almost like when you're talking into the camera on the computer, it's going into this abyss, right? Because you're on the World yeah. Wide Web and you have no idea who's going to be watching you, what they're going to be thinking. And a lot of that does mess with your head. It does. It does. And it's very interesting until we get out of it. And it's like putting in new beliefs and new mantras, for example, um, that's where we have a different set of mindset and, and a vision that's, you know, that's totally more positive than before. Yeah. So speaking of mantras, what is one of your mantras? <laughs> All right. Uh, well, my mantras vary uh, over, over time, but the most recent one is that I attract and I radiate abundance. Ooh, I, I attract and I radiate abundance and I wake up every morning with that and money comes in. <laughs> Rain on me. Money comes in. Good things come in, you know. Uh, when I, I say it. money, it's not just about um, business money. It comes in lots of, I, I term money as 
as things that are, are good that I can use as a tool to do and carry my purpose. So it could be opportunities, it could be a connection, uh, it could be a, a, a lead. So that is to me, um, abundance, you know, and money. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me, you, you mentioned business for the, the listeners out there. Like, what do you do for business? My business is, I have two businesses. One is corporate training, and uh, that is a company that is operating out of Singapore. I'm Singaporean, currently living in Kuala Lumpur. So my business um, called Love and Respect Transforms Holdings in Kuala Lumpur uh, is a business where it's an online platform where I coach and mentor business owners, entrepreneurs, professionals um, to create a social impact through their business. Mm -hmm. So I coach them to get at least five to 20,000 US dollars within 90 days of them going up, um, starting starting a business from scratch, or if they're already running a business to incorporate social impact and create that five to 20K within 90 days. Yeah. Nice. And then what's the other business that you're doing? Uh, the corporate training business. The corporate training business is, again, all things love and respect uh, in organizations. So I, I, I train um, executives, government offices, um, GLCs, government-linked corporations, um, and even um, uh, NGOs, nonprofits, uh, on how to incorporate uh, love and respect values in their whole um, organization through customer service, through uh, creating of products, uh, through um, team bonding, um, through um, even image and, and grooming, and how they present themselves through their, through their corporate brand as well. Yeah. yeah, I love this. And you and I actually had a conversation about like, what does the, all this even mean? And I didn't even know that you were a trained image consultant at the time that we were having this conversation. So we're both trained image consultants, but we don't, we don't teach the principles as we learn them. We're, we're teaching them in a different kind of way. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about like, what do you mean by social impact? And also like, is this, this, is this the idea of like conscious leadership? Yes, absolutely. Conscious leadership is, uh, well, being conscious in, in how you lead others. It is, I also uh, talk about uh, feminine leadership, using your feminine energy to lead others, not just masculine, which we were very used to uh, yes. train yes. people on or lead people, you know, directional, goal setting, uh, um, you know, beating your competitors, um, feminine leadership or conscious leadership is about um, creating good for your team, for yourself, as well as your environment, your uh, the people around you, your communities. And, and that, when I talk about communities, it's not just a specific group of people, but humanity as a whole. So it is for people and planet. So when I talk about social impact, um, I do use the U United Nations uh, SDG goals, uh, so, you know, the Sustainable Development Goals as a model uh, with my clients and also with myself on where is that interest of impact that you want to focus on, whether it's gender equality, women empowerment, um, life on earth, life under the... Uh, in, in the water, you know, it is it is for the animals, for the environment, um, and uh, eliminating poverty, um, zero hunger in the world. So whatever your interest is, it's through your business that you are creating a solution to one of these main problems that we already have in the world, including you know climate the climate crisis right now. So um, this is this is what I mean by social impact. So the businesses that I coach have. Um, you know, the, the business owners that I coach have a good heart already. They, they know that they, they want to solve a, a certain problem. Like they see uh, uh, injustice somewhere. They see um, gender inequality or, or there's lack of diversity in organizations and they want to they wanna, they wanna have more diversity in their own organization. Hiring people from, um, you know, um, places or, or, or you know, uh, uh, they, where normally people won't hire, you know, whether they are visually impaired or whether they are uh, refugees or they're low income or lacking a certain certification or whatever. Um, the people that I, I coach and the people that I work with, including my own business, we're focused on at least one of these, one of these goals. So, um, yeah, like for me, it's like um, I work with refugees here in Kuala Lumpur and also the low income, uh, homeless, uh, the, the low income, uh, like sex workers as well, for them to come out of poverty um, and actually those who want to 
uh, create an alternate, uh, a different um, uh, way of earning income. Like, you know, the, the, the sex workers that I coach are normally people who said like they, they don't want to go and stay in this trade. They want to do something else, but they don't know how and they don't know how to how to come out of that brand of theirs, you know. So we work also with them. So it is a one help one model. Every training I do, uh, paid training and, and um, membership into my organization contributes to the training of mindset and skill set of these groups of people that I work with. Oh my God, I love that idea. I never thought about, like I've done scholarships to people before, but I've never really thought about like the the, the do one, give one. Cause I love uh, Tom's shoes. They do that with, you know, and now you're doing it with your coaching. I love that. Absolutely. And you know what, uh, Mia, actually Tom's shoes inspired me. I saw that and I was like, I want to do that because uh, before I was um, doing, you know, charity on the, Side, like a family activity that's what we do I instead of taking my daughter to the, to the mall uh, we said you know we don't want her to just you know think of oh we can let's go to the mall so we took her to orphanages we took her to feed the homeless um, we created projects where she can bring her friends and do something good and that was how we started but it was never part of my business at all it was separate um, and then I saw Tom's shoes so I said it was possible how do I incorporate that and then also I because we were doing a lot of homeless street feeding uh, for about at least three years, you know, feeding the homeless, we knew some of them personally, and we knew some of them had, had children from the time they were pregnant until the time they, they had kids, they were still in that state, they were not coming out of poverty, and we're still happily feeding them, giving them stuff, and we feel good, but we don't see them come out of poverty, and we're not helping them seriously. So that was when I said, how can we incorporate this? And when I saw Tom Shoes model, I said like, let's see how we can explore that one help one model. And, and we've turned that successfully in our business. I love this idea. I'm gonna have to research it and we'll, we'll talk offline a little bit about it so I can see how, how I can make that happen too. I love this. Because I think one of the things that you kind of touched upon and, and we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but the whole idea of sex work, Right. And, and the whole idea of people who are in poverty or who in who don't have homes or places to live and how we believe. Right. That somehow they're like morally wrong or bad people because they're in these situations. And really, the issue is more with the, the system and how we're just kind of like putting a bandaid on it and not really actually addressing the problems. Right. So tell me a little bit about how like you decided that you were going to help like this population of people, but also like how do you actually help them move from the the mindset? I'm assuming is what what you guys work on the mindset of a person who is homeless or who feels like they can only do sex work to make money. Like how do you get them out of that mindset and you know shift their lives? A lot of coaching, a lot of counseling, and also a lot of um, supportive uh, community. And the community that they know, the people who experienced the life that they did, and they have managed to come out of that. So that I found was very, very powerful. Um, what I did was I facilitated, but I brought in uh, people who used to be like them, you know, like even with refugees, I had refugees who are now, you know, TEDx speakers and, and uh, appearing on, on uh, mainstream media like Al Jazeera, CNN and Channel News Asia, and they're talking about the, the refugee situation here in Malaysia. And uh, they all started being one of those people who were facing all of this oppression and uh, being detained and, uh, you know, uh, having to, to go to jail just because they were working and it was illegal to work. So all of these things, so they managed to find their voice and, and help others. So when they see an example of somebody who who uh, managed to get out of it, they can relate better. So what I do is right now, I work with um, leaders or people who have that that um, that that inner strength. I, I, I interview them first and people who are like, really, yes, I am, that's it, I'm done. I, I will do whatever it takes. And then we hold them accountable for that and lead them. And so that process is um, also challenging. So that's why I don't, I don't take too many. Now I take maximum five in a year for me to coach them personally. And I make them leaders. So as a leader in their own communities and setting them as an example, um, more people see like it is possible. It is it is possible to come out. It is possible to make um, that that three to five thousand dollars a month. It is possible to uh, be able to create a 
a positive life, even though they started all started with nothing and they come from very traumatic environments. So um, I started to focus on leaders. Before I was just, you know, randomly talking to people and putting it, uh, you know, in a seminar form and we have a hundred people in the room. And I found that the impact was not that, was not that effective, not many, not even one or maybe, maybe one person out of a hundred. So that's not, not uh, much impact for me. It was, it was not good enough until I started to coach and identify um, specific people, make them leaders in their own communities. And that's when I saw they started creating impact in their own communities because people can relate to them better and more people uh, are helped and more people come out of that, that um, you know, ne negative cycle of poverty. Yeah. Yeah. I love this because one of the things that I'm noticing too, when, when I'm talking to people who need help from us, right. From coaches, it's usually people who are underprivileged that need the most help, right. They're going to need the most help, but they can definitely have the most impact in communities because they don't really take the thing that they've been doing and the things that they're learning. I don't take it for granted. Like, like I know I have in the past, um, you know, I, definitely come from a place of privilege and I'm not saying that I don't but there's also like parts of me that I understand this whole thing about injustice and I understand what it means like what it means to have to depend on someone else in order to to move forward or to change laws or to do things like that so I'm glad that you are addressing this and tell me how did you how did you come to the conclusion that I'm going to do this one-on-one -on -one coaching with people like this instead of like talking to all of these leaders in the room, because I think that concentrating your effort, right? And then, and then having them kind of go out and do the thing makes so much sense to me now that you said it that way. Yeah, because we tried it the other way. We tried it where we're like, oh, let's help as many people as possible. We want to save everyone. And, you know, we push, put them, we got busloads of uh, people picking them up from the streets and sending them to a hotel and we did seminars and they all came, they didn't learn anything. They were there to eat and they were they were there to, to make friends or um, just to share their problems. It's just for friendship, but it was not making a change or oh, they didn't see the need to make a change. It's all about, oh, poor me. Okay, at least now I can enjoy myself. And they keep asking me for money. So it was it was not something that the direction that I was looking at, but it took me about three years. <laughs> my Zill and I, my husband and I, we were like actively doing this. And even to the point where my husband get calls like at night from friends who own restaurants and said, okay, we have a job opening, you know, this person left and we have like about uh, five av available uh, uh, slots for waiters or cleaners and we, we have a house for them. So my husband will go to the street and actually talk to groups of homeless so who wants a job and actually put them in a hotel um, so that the next day they can go to work and he'll arrange all the, the transport. And and at that time, because we didn't work on the mindset yet, we thought that the solution is they don't have a home, let's give them a place to stay immediately. They don't have a job or money, let's give them a job straight away. Um, and what happened with that was a lot of them, a lot of the hotels actually called us and said, you know, they wanted the money from the deposit and they didn't want to stay. They were like, you know, um, uh, threatening the receptionist for money and all that. So we were like, oh no, again, it's the mindset and the belief, you know? So um, we, we had to redo all that. And uh, it, it was a lot of trial and error. I didn't have an example to follow because the, the, the people who are actually helping here are NGOs, you know, the nonprofits. Yeah. And that, that was not the direction. They were giving a lot, giving, and we, we love them. We love that they are helping so many, but that we, there was no change. And we were being entrepreneurs. We want to see something. Let's try something different, you know? And so there was a lot of trial and error. Yeah, <laughs> so decided, yeah. So, okay, this works. Yeah, and, and it sounds like, I mean, and I've learned this too, and it's probably both have learned it the same way, right? By the doing, by by the undoing of all the things that we've learned previously. And that mindset is just so important to, to really create change. Cause I see that you guys coach for change, right? But if we're not working on the mindset, if we're just handing out the, the, the band-aids instead of actually cutting people open and doing the surgery and taking out the stuff that doesn't work anymore. I find that the mindset is like the biggest piece and, and so many people miss that.
that is the fundamental one. You know, the, the basic one is the mindset. Um, and just like I, I, I learned that with the entrepreneurs, you know, sometimes we work with, okay, social impact, this is how you create, what is your passion? Um, but if we don't first work on the mindset, nothing changes. The self-belief, the, the money story, the money mindset, all of these things come in, the resilience, the confidence. So mindset is very important. So even with the, the refugees that we work with, um, it, all, it is all about, first we do the forgiveness, the releasing before we start to program, okay, this is what you can do. It is all about the mindset first. And um, even, even uh, people from, you know, like the sex workers or the marginalized com communities or the low income, um, it is that self-belief that they are not meant to be a certain level that even though they say, yes, I want to make money, but it's just that that self-belief, it all comes from mindset. So we work on that is the first fundamental thing. And until we see that, okay, they're open to receiving and they, they can start to take action on small things, you know, like creating certain projects and they're doing and they're receiving money. Okay, let's go bigger and all that. So that's how I also work with my business owners, entrepreneurs who want to create social impact and also with a marginalized community. Mindset first. <laughs> and, and, and that's the same thing I do as well. Like I... A lot of people will come into my program because it is personal branding, but they really don't understand that, hey, everything starts with your mindset. And even at each level, like you and I were talking about, like how we were working with Gina at a higher level, we still have to work on mindset every day. Every, everybody that I know who is successful or who is um, an entrepreneur or who's doing things that, that create an impact uh, in their lives and the lives of others, they're working on their mindset. Absolutely. And every time we want to break a certain level of self-belief, you know, like I, I, I mentioned, I've got, like going from zero to $1,000 in business, it is a big shift to receive that just $1,000. And then from $1,000 to $5,000, it's another mindset. Five to 10K, 10 to 50K, it's all that, you know, and as we grow our business, as we are creating bigger impact, it's all our mindset and self-belief also on the ability to, to, to really creating big change and receiving big money. Yeah. Always. So how do you, how do you see, how do you help people with the self-belief part? Right. Um, okay. What we do is again, we always focus on what are their strengths um, instead of focusing on things that they cannot do. So what is their superpower? So what is their talent? How yes. can we, how can we turn that into, uh, um, into money making rather than yes. doing things that you you're not good at don't don't try to do something like for me okay like kajabi for example <laughs> Same. I suck at Same. kajabi I have no idea I don't even know my password and I was like I was, my husband is like oh this is so fun this is so fantastic so he does all that, all of those stuff and it it is it's so pleasurable to do work that when you only focus on what you're good at and work with people on things that you you're not good at and and let let yourself be supported so that's one of the key things like focus on your own strengths and that's where the self belief you know you are good at that and you know that it is it it, it it does not take so much resistance and 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 fear because you are so good at it for example um, I, I'll give you an example also on some refugees that I work with yeah. and they yeah. come to Malaysia, they can't speak English, they cannot speak Malay, they only speak Arabic and it's like single mom, only 500 ringgit, 500 ringgit is like slightly less than a, I think it's about 100 US dollars okay. in their wallet for them to survive and I said don't worry you know I started with only two ringgit, you, know, you got 500, you, you're better off than me, so what are you good at and they were like oh I can cook, I said okay let's try what you can cook and when they cook they they, they they just share certain dishes i just you know give them some money go to the go to the market just create sample dishes and all that what they can cook and it's like restaurant quality dishes you know and it's like that's their superpower i say can you do more of this you know and they were like yeah but i need help like how much to price and uh, maybe you know like uh who would want to who would want to eat this and i'm like yeah as long as you can focus on the cooking, let's see who can market. And we have a group of people who can just share online, you know, showing us eating food that's so delicious. And that's like, that was how one Palestinian lady, um, she learned, she learned um, to speak basic Malay and she's better in English. Um, she started from scratch and she has children to support. She came to Malaysia with no skill, never worked before. And she learned how to cook 
she learned how to cook. She was not even like, I could, she couldn't even cook, but she learned how to cook and she found that was her superpower. She could create dishes, like all kinds of dishes. And now she's making, I think she's making more than some of the local um, <laughs> locals here, you know, with her catering, catering services. And she does Palestinian dishes, like whatever she can remember her mom uh, used to cook. Oh, she just experimented at home and that's her superpower. And that was like, she became very confident in that. Yeah, so yeah. speaking to people about it, yeah. Yeah, you have said a mouthful. So doing, like forming out the things that are not your zone of genius, right? Letting other people do that and, and just doing the thing that you're really good at, right? Um, a lot of us believe that we have to know how to do everything and that we have to be good at everything. And therefore we're just scattered. Our focus is scattered, our skills are scattered. And we do get this, um, like I know, like I said, when we first started like working in, um, in Divine Living Academy, like I didn't know what, I mean, I'd been on Instagram, but I didn't know how to make an Instagram post, let alone make one about myself or you know promote my stuff. And so even just that little bit of uh, not having that knowledge, but thinking that I needed to know how to do all of these things in order to be successful, it, it takes the focus out, but it also like took me out of the game, right? So I'm glad that you're teaching like your, your newer entrepreneurs like right away, like stop trying to focus on all the stuff that you don't know how to do. Let's focus on what you do know how to do and then we'll figure out the rest. Yes, exactly. Or get people who can support you on those things that, you know, you need support from. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So I'm going to ask you some of the questions that I asked some of my, <laughs> um, my other participants because we kind of just like went into a bunch of different stuff, right? <laughs> um. So what would you, what were the three words that would best describe you and, and or your business? Um, high energy, love, and joy. Speak to me a little bit about joy and why that's important. Okay, joy is something, okay, joy brings up this high vibe, positive energy. When you have joy, uh, you receive things a lot better. You, you become more confident you enjoy whatever it is even even when you are facing something difficult when you have you are joyful in that you're grateful uh, that the, the the challenge is there that puts you in a totally different mindset so i always talk about um even when you're creating social impact focus on the solutions you are providing because it can be very depressing when you look at all the problems and challenges, right? Uh -huh. And be joyful that you are creating solutions and it's exciting and there are people who want and they're looking for, for you to, to uh, solve that problem and it is, and it is something that, that is fun. And this is, this is something I, I always instill in my community as well. So in, my, in our business, we focus a lot on joy because without joy, you you'll be stressed out. Absolutely. It's not fun. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm glad you brought up joy because we're going to, um, I have a joy coach that that's going to be coming on and talking about her. Wow. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. So you'll get to meet her. Um, all right. So what is your least favorite mode of communication? <laughs> the phone. <laughs> the phone. You know, like, talking to people on the phone? Talking to people on the phone, and which is very ironic because now I'm very active on Clubhouse, <laughs> and and I have my rooms. Then I just had a room open just before talking to you, and it's um uh, because I'm not a very auditory person. I'm a very visual person. I like to see people, and even if we have to communicate online, I always ask, "Can we meet on Zoom?" Right? Yeah. So that's that's the reason why. But I have learned to um learn to be more auditory, listen better, and. Uh, and be able to communicate better as well but it's not it's not my favorite thing <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, i'm i'm like that with emails i cannot okay. send an email I, I send videos right and i'll respond in a video that's so much easier for me than typing it out and trying to ugh. my my mailbox <laughs> is full it stays full and i can't stand it oh my um, God. <laughs> so tell me what like what do you wear that makes you feel like a total badass Oh, um, interestingly, when you asked, when you were sending me this question, I was thinking of what makes me feel badass. I, I, I say, you know, I love long flowy dresses mm -hmm. that I, I feel so confident in long flowy dresses. And I, 
I wear that even in like uh, corporate meetings. You know, if I if I have to present uh, to to a group of corporates as well, I I don't wear a pantsuit because I just don't feel that's me. I love wearing dresses, so that's what I wear. I and love so far, this. Yeah, I, I still I still get the job, so I guess okay. I guess it doesn't affect the. <laughs> And I'm glad that you, you're speaking about this because I think a lot of us believe that we have to show up in a certain way in order to get the respect, in order to get the job, in order to, to, to do the thing that we're there for. And really it is about like what makes you feel amazing yeah. and, and using that energy in the room instead of, instead of wearing what somebody else told you you should wear. Yes, yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. Yes. So tell me a little bit more about like what our listeners can do today to have more impact in the world through their businesses. And then how can people get in touch with you? Okay. Uh, one, one key thing is, so what problems are you solving? If it's something that's very passionate, it's in your heart that you find that, um, you know, you have gone through it. You found, you found that it was a challenge whether it is, um, you know, communicating with people or, or uh, dressing up or being authentic or whatever it is in your area, focus on that. And that, that is something that you can, you can start on first. And why were you, why did you find it was a challenge and how do you overcome that? So that, that can create a solution to a problem uh, that you, you want to solve, that you can solve. And also what is your passion project? Like if you could, if you could, um, do something that um, can solve a problem that you see in your community. Um, whether it is you, you, some people saying you know there are a lot of stray cats in my area, and it's and it's disturbing that people just um, you know they abandon cats or they 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 call the 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 you know the we call this the land authority where they come and they they take the 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 stray cats away and they actually put them to sleep. You know, um, yeah, and and all of these things. And I've got people in my community also because they feel so much for animals. They're animal lovers. Um, we, we work their business to fund her animal shelter as well. So whatever that interests you and no judgment, um, if it's whether you it's something that you feel passionate about, for example, uh, climate change or whether it is um, uh, uh, like you see uh, women's uh, rights issues. So focus on that 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 give that gives you something that you are desire that you desire to solve a problem because something that really interests you and you feel strongly about um that will get you to continue doing it if it's something like oh it's a good idea yeah people say that we should do something for the environment maybe i can do that i think if it's if it if you hear yourself talking like that then it's not for you so find a social impact that really you resonate with and you feel like i want to do this even if it means no money i i really want to do this um so that's that's how that's how you can start first yeah. i love that so what what do you have coming up do you have anything coming up any programs or anything you want to talk about on yeah. here yeah. Okay, we have a lot of programs coming up this month. This is October, October's ending. Uh, we have a conscious, we call it Conscious Communication Month. And um, we're having a program um, end of October um, on conscious communication and how to uh, be an accelerated uh, learning speaker, yeah, to uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, be a conscious community. A conscious communicator and when we talk about conscious communication it is not about just how to structure your words presentation and all that it is about being conscious of what you you feel with with certain words you can feel it in your body a certain trigger and how how do you manage that and how do you relay that to the best uh, way to the person that you are talking to so this is conscious communication and um, we also have um weekly meetups and huddles in my community. So they can, can get in touch with me and I can put them into our community where we do have our huddles and they are welcome to join in and meet some of the other social impact uh, business owners as well. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So how do people get in touch with you if they want to learn more about what you have coming up or want to work with you? Um, Instagram, LinkedIn, just Google my name, Mushida Said. I think you can you can see a whole lot of things. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm active in LinkedIn. I'm also active in Facebook, okay. uh, Murshida.Said. Um, and also Instagram, Murshida Said. 
Yeah. So yeah. these are the places that I'm very active in. Okay. And we'll put the links to uh, your social media in the notes for this show. So, um, so people can get in touch with you. Yes. Yeah. That's great. Thank you so much, awesome. Thank you so much. Oh my God. This is so much fun. And um, I cannot wait until you guys get to, to hear what we talked about today and like go out and make your own impact. Like what is the thing that you want, the thing that you know that needs to change in the world and you be that, that person to make that change. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Mia. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Brand Disruptors podcast. I'm your host, Mia Lamont. And if you like what you just heard, I hope that you will pass along our web address at www.mialamont.com backslash podcast to your friends and colleagues. And please leave us a positive review on iTunes, download this episode and any other episode that you found to be helpful. And be sure to check out our previous episodes and join me next time with another edition of the Brand Disruptors Podcast.